Halloween! Happy Halloween, everyone. Today's video is another glow-in-the-dark video. I've been really trying to incorporate as much glowing elements throughout this season as I can. And this is going to be spilled potion bottles. I have three different bottles that are three different shapes that are spilled across the nail, and each one of them glows. One of them is capped, and I actually just put glow-in-the-dark pigment right inside the bottle so it actually wiggles around a little bit in there like a mini aquarium. I hope you guys like it as much as I do, and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. We are going to begin with an overlay of a glitter acrylic that is a black base with multicolored hexagon glitters in it. I love this one and I've especially been trying to use it in the Halloween season because I think it has a little bit of a Halloween feeling to it. I think it's so fun. Oh man. Okay, so we have that color over the background absolutely gorgeous i love it love it and i'm going to encapsulate it with a layer of clear acrylic whenever you're applying a clear acrylic over the top of a rough texture behind it which glitter automatically is is going to have a little bit of a roughness make sure your clear acrylic is slightly thinner than you would normally use it because that'll help it flow over the glitter shape and it won't leave any air pockets file the nail into shape with your e-file making sure that you smooth it out. If you do file through the clear acrylic layer all the way into the glitter, it may make your glitters look a little bit less shiny and beautiful. It may make them look a little scratchy. So try to make sure that you keep a nice layer of clear over the whole thing. Now in a nail firm backing, we're going to start sculpting the first potion bottle. And I'm going to show you the one that I consider to be the biggest challenge when I started out. So you're going to sculpt a circle. And then right when it seems like it's going to start setting up, you're going to pick it up and place it around a straw and sort of give it a curve so that it flows down the sides. You don't want it to be flat. You want it to keep that circular shape, but you want it to just kind of go down the sides a bit. Sculpt a second circle on your nail form backing that is approximately the same size. When you can, go ahead and pick that up. And then you're going to place it on the opposite side of the straw, trying to get the two sides of your circle to gently touch at the corners. Once you have it to this point, if the circles don't want to stay together, that's fine. But as long as they're close, then they're sort of pointing towards each other. That is good enough. Then back on your nail firm backing, you're going to sculpt little pieces of clear acrylic that are very thin. And the shape isn't that particular, so just lay a bead down and then pat it out. And then after you've patted it out and it has started to turn matte, which is kind of our secret potion for all of this, you're going to pick up that little bit of clear acrylic and you're going to lay it over one of the seams where your potion bottle is open. So at this point, you're just taking little pieces of clear acrylic over and over and over again, grabbing different ones, and you're going to set them over the places that need to be filled in so that your bottle completely seals around your straw. As long as these are thin enough, they should conform very easily to the shapes that you have on on your straw so or on your potion bottle they should just kind of flow over like cling wrap so we're going to take the next one and then place it over and then you should just be able to press it with your brush and kind of glue it down and do the same thing keep repeating this process until you filled in all of those little gaps it doesn't have to be perfectly smooth you just don't want there to be big holes in your potion bottle make sure that you look around it and that there aren't any gaps that you can see and then once you have it where it's pretty much filled in, you can seal the very last little edges with clear acrylic directly onto the straw. And that will kind of finish it off. I'm gonna lay that one over the top of that last spot. And after you have it like this and it's kind of mummy wrapped up and you've got a base of your potion bottle, then you're going to take clear acrylic and you're going to sculpt all of the finishing details, all of the last shapes of it. So it's not finished looking, it's really rough. There are, you know, patchwork galore here so you're going to take a quite a bit of clear acrylic and you're going to round it all off so it's nice and smooth looking and it looks like a nice blown glass bottle i'm going to add a large bead to either side on top of the original circles let's kind of smooth those out and then add a lot of smoothing acrylic on the sides you want everything to just look a little softer you don't want any of those sharp edges anymore just go down the sides kind of place the bead down and then pull it into that nice soft shape. If your acrylic doesn't want to just automatically round itself out, you may need to use a little bit wetter acrylic. Sometimes if the clear acrylic is too dry, it doesn't flow into that automatic dome shape. But if it's just the right texture, it should be a fairly easy prospect to just get those nice soft shapes. And then you could just kind of brush them down and around. Add a rim on the top of the bottle. And then after you have that one done and it's all cured and you can click it and it seems hard, you can gently pull it off the straw and it will slide out. 
once you have it, sometimes it doesn't want to just slide out. You have to use a tweezers or something to kind of loosen it up. Once it's off the straw, however, then you can take an e-file and you can carve any of the shapes that need to be smoothed out, especially around, say, the rim of the bottle and the bottom of the bottle where there may have been a little bit of extra acrylic. I like to go around just about everything and kind of finish it. I feel like it looks a little more complete if you just take and smooth out all of the edges. If your bottle looked perfectly, perfectly good from the beginning, you probably wouldn't need to, and it'd be an extra step. I, however, like I said, I just like to, I feel like it finishes it off. For the next bottle, I'm going to go around the straw again, and I'm going to sculpt a clear base just to start me, just to start off with, so that's about the height of the bottle that I want it to be, just going around in a circle. Pat it out so that it is relatively smooth and flat. And then after you have it where you've got a good shape going and you're happy with the height of it, you're happy with the generalized thing, leave it to cure for a moment so that as you go to start adding messed up, it doesn't alter what's underneath. As you go to start doing the details on the next layer of this one, I want this bottle to flare out at a pretty like swoopy angle and then to flare and then to cut down. So I'm going to create a little lip almost as if I am doing a reverse French tip and I'm going to just sculpt that nice little edge. And then after I go around and I have a pretty good lip, almost like a skirt that's flaring out, then I will go through and I'll smooth it down and cut that back down towards the bottom of the bottle. As you're working on this, if you have never done a reverse French tip, I would highly recommend that you go check out my acrylic basics live class that I did oh, quite a while ago, but it's so informative. And if you are new to working with acrylic and it's something that you know, you really want to get a good base knowledge of, I highly recommend that class. It does go in depth on why a reverse French tip and sculpting French tips is the basis of essentially all acrylic sculpting. And if you have not looked at that, haven't watched that one yet, or if you have and you want a refresher, I will put a link to that in the description box below. Just like with the other potion bottle, I'm going to add a lip right along the top of this one. I feel like that little lip really sells the this is a blown glass bottle look. I feel like that's one of the most important little details. And as far as the shapes of your potion bottles go, there are so many different ones. If you just look up potion bottle art or potion bottle clip art or potion bottles on the internet, you will find so much inspiration. Not only will you find inspiration for the shapes of the bottles, you'll find inspiration for what you could put in them, what labels you could make for them. There's just a lot of really cute ideas out there. And I had trouble picking out just three. For the last bottle, I'm going to start it out just as I did the previous one with a cylinder all the way around the straw. This time, however, I'm going to start by blending the bottom down. So I'm going to, this one's going to have a similar shape. It's going to be a little bit taller looking, a little bit narrower, and it's going to be a little softer, but it's going to be the same kind of an idea where I add a thickness around the middle that fades down towards the bottom and then blend it out towards the top. This one's going to have a bit more of like a shoulders type of a look. I always try to think of something that, to compare this to. This one reminds me of like somebody's shoulders. So it's kind of the neck and it flares out to the shoulders and then it cuts down. So we're going to just smooth out the space right along the top of the bottle. Create a nice, nice little ledge there. And then same thing as the other ones, add the lip right along the top edge of the bottle. If you wanted to, you could certainly file these other two as well. I did, I didn't show it on the video because the filing element is essentially the same for all three bottles. So you don't need to, you know, there's nothing different between filing this one or the previous one versus the first one. Once you are happy with all your bottles, pop them off the straw and then on a nail form backing, set down a small little circle of clear acrylic and press a bottle onto it. This is going to fill in their bottoms. Do this for all three. Another little thing of clear acrylic, press the bottom. If you have extra acrylic that goes out around the edges, take a tweezers or a dotting tool and just sort of scrape it off and it'll come right off and it will not uh, stick to the bottle then. Add your last one. Then on your nail, I'm going to drill a hole right through the tip. That's going to be where the where the potion bottle that is upright pouring over the nail is going to be pouring. And then I'm going to glue a wire into that hole that I just made, holding that in place until the nail glue kind of grips and then securing the bottle to the end of the wire. So I'm going to attach that one. This time, instead of trying to use nail glue, I'm just going to grab some clear acrylic and then hold that in place until the acrylic cures. If your acrylic is a slow setting acrylic, that will be a little bit more time consuming and a little more tedious than mine, which is a fast setting acrylic. Either way though, I feel like that's a bit more of a secure way to do that than trying to do it with just uh, nail glue. I'm going to attach my other bottles in the same fashion with my clear acrylic, placing each bottle down, holding it until I can comfortably let go and feel safe that the bottle isn't going anywhere. 
but as with most things, I will further secure them with more clear acrylics so that they don't go anywhere. So just right underneath the bottles, just add a little bit more acrylic so that it's got a little bit more peace of mind. Add the last one. This is the one that is going to be the capped bottle. So this one is not spilled. This is the one that apparently did not get tipped over. And we're going to just attach that one down. And then same thing, a little bit of clear acrylic underneath. I did the same with my wire on the bottle that is spilled. After you have that, then you can add the potions that's that are spilling out all over the place. I am using glow in the dark acrylic for the two potions that are spilled. I'm going to take an orange glow and apply that all the way down the wire, both front and back of the wire. And I'm going to try to sort of push it into the potion bottle as best I can. When you are applying acrylic to the inside of the potion bottles, be very careful not to get any acrylic that is going to get stuck in your brush. So don't use the tip of your brush to push it in. Try to use the belly of your brush, the middle of your brush, to pat it forward and push it that way. If you do end up getting acrylic in the bristles of your brush, immediately wipe it out. Put your brush into your bottle, into your jar of monomer. Set it there for 30 seconds, whatever you feel is the best. Wipe it out. Look at your bristles. If you see any acrylic left in there, put it back into your monomer. Soak it for another 30 seconds. Look at it. Brush it out. See if there's any acrylic left. Make sure that you don't allow that acrylic to fully set up inside your brush. I'm going to take that glow in the dark orange and I'm going to have it drip all the way over the nail down the sides making plenty a mess. And then after you have all of that one done, you've smoothed it out, you're happy with the shape of your dripping gooey mess, you can pick out the color for your second drip selection. So when I was thinking of the colors, usually Halloween is associated with secondary colors. You've got orange, purple, and green, as well as obviously like your blacks and your darker colors. But as far as like the bright colors go, seems like it's mostly neon secondaries. So I have this really pretty bright green that I'm gonna be using that's also a glow in the dark color. So I will be doing that one for my second bottle. And then within the third one, I'm going to use purple glow in the dark pigment. So that's why I picked out my three glow in the dark colors before I got started. If you do that, you kind of have the opportunity if you make sure that you select them to space them properly. So for me, my orange and my purple are the least neon of my three colors. They're all bright, but those two are the ones that are the least like intense, whereas that green looks like it's glowing in full daylight because it is just a crazy color. And I wanted that one to be in the middle because otherwise it would look a little unbalanced. So if you have all your colors picked out in advance, you can do some more selection that way. I am a big advocate for kind of preparing yourself ahead of time and not just flying by the seat of your pants for everything. I definitely do that for a lot of my art, but for something like color selection, it's just a good idea to kind of get all your ducks in a row before you begin so that you can make a a good choice when you place certain things in certain spots, especially for something like this where there really isn't a right and a wrong as far as you aren't replicating a logo of something and obviously the red has to go here because that's the way the logo is. This is a creative decision and you know, you have some choices. I'm going to roll up a piece of paper and I'm going to shove that in the top of my bottle that is going to have the pigment. And then I'm going to use that as a little funnel and I'm going to pour some glitter in there and I'm going to pour in my glow in the dark pigment. So I'm gonna tap that down so that the glitter kind of falls in Then grab my glow in the dark purple, pour that in, kind of look at it from the side to make sure that you fill the bottle to the height that you want it filled. Take your funnel out and then grabbing a glittery brown, I'm going to be adding the cork that is in the top of the bottle. Make sure that you use a very dry bead to stop it at the top so that the acrylic does not flow down the bottle and get all over the place. Add another bead right on top of that one so that it sticks up a little bit on the top of the bottle. Pat it from side to side, kind of tuck in the edges. And then once that is done and your bottle is all corked, then you can move on to your labeling process. As I mentioned earlier, there are a lot of inspirational photos out there for potion bottle labels. There is different shapes of labels that you can pick out. There as far as like if they're square or the one that I'm doing to start with started with an oval and then has square ends on the top and the bottom or ones that have a lot more of a flourished looking label shape and then the different things that you can write for your labels on the inside of, you know, for your words. What's inside this bottle? You can do something very classic. I've newt graveyard dust spider's legs if you want to keep it straightforward otherwise you can do things that are a little bit more historically correct if you wanted um you could add like wolfsbane or you know nightshade inside your bottles if you want it to be a little bit more like historically accurate for what a witch might use inside her potion bottles Otherwise, if you wanted to, you could not do any words at all. If writing little words on something like this is 
difficult for you and it's not something that sounds like a good idea or fun, you can do something like you could just paint a bat on your bottle instead of saying like I'm writing um, bat blood, you could just paint the bat and then it could be left up to interpretation of what element of the bat people think is inside this potion bottle. I'm going to write bat in the upper section of that little circle block above the circle and then blood below and then paint the bat in the middle. So I'm doing a little bit of both for this one. And then I'm going to outline my label so that the edges just look a little bit more vivid and crisp. Once you're done with your first label, you can move on to the next one. For the next label, I'm going to write tears. Again, this can kind of be left up to interpretation if this is a specific person's tears or just tears collected over the course of time. We've got T-E-A-R-S. I'm going to outline this little label as well. And then I'm going to paint just with black a little tear shape in the corners on either side of the T and the S. One thing that's really nice about using acrylic paint in this circumstance when it's just white and black is that you can go through and you can touch up the letters whenever you want to and add like a little, you know, if one of the lines gets too thick, you can add more white paint to thin it out and you can fix things a little bit easier than some other, than other times. On the last one, I'm going to write spider venom. I went through and I had such a hard time picking out my words. It was a balance between things that I wanted to write. I definitely would have done graveyard dirt if graveyard wasn't such a long word, but because it is, it would be harder to write on my little label unless I had a really long label. So I, I selectively picked things that were shorter words. And then I wanted to also include my little pictures. So I've got spider written across the top of the label, venom across the bottom, and then I'm going to do my quick little spider depiction, fix things up a little bit with my white paint wherever it seems like needs to be smoothed out a little, add the outline around the outside of the bottle, or the outside of the label rather. And then once that is done and you have all of this finished, then you can go through and you can apply gel sealer to all of the potion bottles and their goo. I did not apply any gel top coat or top coat at all actually over the background. After I had finished filing it, I had buffed it so that it was nice and smooth and the finish is very lovely. And because it is just raw acrylic, it does not need to have a top coat on it. If your finish looked a little bit rough, you could still see visible scratches or that sort of thing. You could have applied a layer of matte top coat prior to sculpting any of your, any of your potion goo. As you're curing this, because there is top coat on all sides of this nail after you've done all the bottles, tip it on each side so cure it straight, then tip it on the right and the left to make sure that all sides get properly hit by the lamp so that there isn't any uncured product. And that's it! This one is so fun. It's a, vid it's a design that really doesn't show up very well in photographs because there's different things on all sides, but it looks absolutely amazing in person or in video, and it is just a showstopper in the dark. You can see the different colors of the glow. I love it. I hope you guys like it as much as I do, and don't forget to click subscribe to so my future videos as well.